So I got some questions about how to organize your assembly in Fusion 360 and making new components and having them as like sub assemblies. Let's uh, dig in. So let's just start adding a new component. We are on the top level now. We could start sketching here, but optimally we want all our sketches for our sub components to be in the sub component. So let's make a new component here. Let's call this um, sub zero, not really important. And it's already activated as you see. Now we can start creating sketches for whatever we want to sketch. 2020 bar of something and then extrude. Let's make it like 500. So now I have this sub component. We can even rename the body as well if you we want to do that. Sub zero or just call it bar zero. What we of course can do now, we can take this um, body and create components from bodies. Now we have a new component here. But if we go into this component now, you can see in our timeline, there's nothing. There's only the, the make new component. And we do not want to have uh, this solution. What we want to have is this here. In the timeline now, we have our sketch, we have the extrude. And if you add more, like a fillet, Let's make a fillet here. Then we have the fillet as well. So when we do it like this, all features for this component stays in its timeline. And that's what we want. So if I now want another, like a sub assembly here, we already activated this guy, and then we can make a new component. Let's call this sub one. Now we are in sub one. And we can start sketching. So let's do something else, like a circle or something. Finish sketch extrude, uh, negative 200 or something. This is the way you should organize your sub assemblies. Let me go to the top level and show you what happens if I now create something. Sketch on the top plane. Let's do a polygon. So now we have a body here on the upper level. And of course, we can create a component from this guy. And then let's say you want this component in the sub zero, we can drag it. And it sort of works. If we activate our new component, and again, in our timeline, it's nothing. If we are to edit this component now, we need to find where our sketch is. If the assembly gets heavy, it gets big, then you lose control over your sub assemblies. You will not easily find the sketches you want to change or the features you want to change. So like doing this, let me go back in time here. If I want something here, whatever level you want it, find the level or make a new level. I can make a new level here, just activate and create component. Or I want another one on the sub zero level. Then I just go to the top and new component and uh, Again, sub zero, let's call this B, call the other one A. So now we have two sub zero components. Sub A has a sub assembly as well, or a sub component it's called in Fusion. And now we can start making stuff in our sub zero B component. We can add the parts, we can add bodies, or we can add more components in a lower level. Again, we have all the features to this component when we activate it. So it's easy to go inside and change stuff. This is the best practice in Fusion 360 for creating components in a big assembly. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and have a nice day. Catch you guys soon.